today specifically we'll be talking about animals in agriculture and also delve into supply management of uh, dairy products. So animals for decades have been an important source uh, of protein and important part of um, communities across the globe and production has uh, changed over time with industrialization and increase in production. Currently, British Columbia ranks first in Canada for the highest uh, provincial herd milk quality and average milk production. Uh, according to national summaries on milk quality statistics. And most of BC's dairy heads are located in the lower mainland, southeastern uh, Vancouver Island and north of Kanagan and Shuswap area. So um, dairy production is one of the important part of animal production, specifically within British Columbia. So uh, I decided to focus on <laughs> dairy production as we talk about animals in agriculture, but also realizing that it covers a whole lot of different animals like poultry, um, horses, <laughs> different, different uh, animals are involved in within agriculture. And, and there are also multiple considerations depending on the species uh, being raised. So as I mentioned, animal production is important because it, uh, because of the protein, pro food products, supports livelihoods, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But they're also, we cannot deny uh, the negative detriments uh, increased animal production has had on our environment um, from greenhouse gas emissions to loss of biosity, poor animal welfare, particularly in um, factory farming conditions and some factory farming conditions, as well as loss of habitats for wildlife as our land is cleared to grow crops to feed livestock and there is also increased human and wildlife conflicts, zoonotic diseases, um, as new emerging, it's always a concern as emerging diseases continue to, to jump from animals to humans. So increase in animal production and the proximity between humans and animals is also of like really high concern. So the animal agriculture sector is now viewed as a major source of greenhouse gas emissions. Um, due to, for example, land clearing for pasture, as I have mentioned earlier, and animal agriculture contributes at least about 14.5% of global uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And these are just uh, estimates from 2010, for, for, from 20, from studies done by uh, certain authors in 2010. And these numbers continue to increase and most dairy operations belong to large commercial farms in some countries less like the US, uh, which at all stages consume and release vast quantities of water, uh, chemicals and pesticides. So pollution is also very big concern. And climate change as a uh, Increase in animal production also affects climate change to the release of greenhouse gas emissions like methane. Animals are also affected by changing in climate, such as high temperatures, for example, in dairy cattle, uh, which causes impairment of their health, as well as animal welfare, and uh, it impacts their immune system, as well as induces uh, immune suppression and increases susceptibility to infections. So it's everything is interconnected and they, it's always uh, be aware of uh, the implications on both the environment, humans and animals. So what <laughs> the question is always what can we do as individuals? Yes, we have expectations for uh, governing bodies, for uh, farmers, etc. So, but as individuals, what can we do to reduce the, the demand for animal products? So, I encourage you to uh, reflect on this. 
and think about this. So just a quick highlight, we have the UBC Dairy Research and Education Center uh, located at the, in Agassiz, which is affiliated with our faculty and it's um, state of the art facilities for dairy education and research. And they focus on really finding ways to contribute to development of sustainable food production as well as animal welfare of um, mo most partic particularly in dairy cattle. So they are studies, science through studies and through research, there are always ways where uh, science can connect to um, farmers and production side to find ways to improve uh, conditions in which the animals are raised, as well as um, environmental uh, implications in reducing, uh, there are always new studies being formed, whether it be changing the diet or et cetera, in order to help uh, mitigate some of the uh, ne negatives in animal production. So something to definitely check out uh, if you uh, uh, happen to be in BC at some point. So I mentioned earlier that I will be talking about supply management. So since the 70s, dairy, uh, egg and poultry, including chicken and turkey farms in Canada, I've operated under a system called supply management. So as the, this a survey was actually done uh, by the Angus Reid Institute on in Canada, they, they did the study uh, across the, the, the different provinces within Canada to know if people really knew what supply management is. And most of them didn't know. So it's okay if you don't really know what it is. <laughs> so it's, uh, you, yeah, it's, you're not alone uh, if you're not sure what it is and how it works. Hopefully by the end of this, you, you'll be able to get an idea of but it is. So supply management has um, three pillars. That is uh, predictable uh, imports, product production discipline, fair price to farmers. What do we mean by these three pillars? Uh, pr production to discipline is to manage the, the purposes to manage the amount being produced to meet domestic demand and uh, predictable imports to that is to accurately calculate the amount needed to be produced in Canada according to demand so that, so that you don't end up um, importing more than what is needed and also fair price to farmers uh, so that all farmers have stability in terms of income. So what does this really mean? So when there's the, the sphere on predictable in inputs, the, the Canadian Milk Supply Management Committee sets yearly national industrial raw milk production quarters or market sharing quarters. And for each, for, for each province in Canada to match production with domestic need. So if each pro province allocates quarters to individual dairy farmers of what they're supposed to, they're not supposed to exceed uh, that, uh, production. So the system sets domestic production uh, and keeps prices stable, they were guaranteeing farmers a steady income because they would mm, the production meets the demand. So this system, um, this management system helps to keep farms small. So on average, um, it depends on uh, each province, but on average, uh, Canadian operations have small head sizes, around 89, whereas the US you get like farms sometimes with an average of 500 cows or some get up to like a thousand cows on each farm. And this it also helps like family run farms or small farms um, and make sure that they have say, steady income and also have the space within the market because um, they would usually get, would normally get uh, overshadowed by big commercial rent farms. Um, so there's also limited waste 
and there is also less need for importation. So support local. And on this part, production discipline, the second pillar I'm going to talk about. Uh, so as farmers produce normal or less than their annual quarters, uh, it prevents overproduction, which is very important um, in terms of waste management. And also, um, and they also, there's also a system where they are penalized if they make not, they make less or too much. So it, it tries to keep that uh, match between the production and um, the demand. So the prices of their products are also stable. Uh, and, but then there's less of a production. We'll go more into detail about the pricing uh, later on as we move on. In the, compared to the US, uh, where there's subsidized, a, a system of subsidization of farmers, um, we see there is a difference between the supply management system and subsidizations. Um, there is excess production of cow's milk and there is no limit on how much a farm should produce. Uh, and even, even there is less pro pro demand, uh, farmers still produce more, is they still get subsidized by um, the government. So, is the which promotes wastefulness and overproduction. So, on reliable income for farmers, um, as they are producing, they're meeting their quota or the specific what is outline for them to, um, it makes sure that they get income back into their farms, creates better uh, farming technology and best practices and increased animal welfare and hopefully better outcome of high quality production. So a free market is very competitive and causes like a desperate situation for dairy farmers. So this, supply management system guarantees returns for producers and allows confident reinvestment in operations and increases product quality with reinvestment and protects uh, farmers from free market, which otherwise subject them to price volatility. So there is strict control on that and um, which helps in boosting confidence for the farmers. So I thought that they are, you may have like caught some of the advantages of having a supply management system, for example, um, reducing waste um, and kind of like making sure that farmers have they have income, but consumers pay a price for supply management. So a study done by uh, Mule and Chan in 2010 showed that high prices disproportionately um, affect low-income individuals or families. So domestically, Canada's price uh, distortion has shown to be 30% higher than it should be, placing uh, a greater burden on, on, the, uh, on the poor since they must spend a greater portion of their income to consume a healthy diet. So dairy um, is an efficient source of protein and uh, essential nutrients such as vitamin D and vitamin D and calcium are in, for example, in one cup of milk, we get 30, 300 milligrams of calcium compared to 3.4 cups of broccoli, uh, or you need four cups of beans to get the same amount of calcium. So for some, it's a very essential part of uh, their diet. So I'd like to ask you, would you buy more? Um, would you buy more? Are you, are you willing to uh, pay more for the price of milk under the supply management system? Or would you want it um, removed? So it's, uh, it's always something to, to consider. Uh, are you willing as a consumer to pay more money uh, to have the supply management system still continue or would you want it removed and kind of like um, 
knowing like it's the trade-offs between the two. So a study was also done. Um, so by the same, the Angus Reid Institute in 2017. And if we look on the part for milk, 60% or 64% of the people are like, no supply management uh, because it would only cost like a dollar fifty per liter for the milk, whereas within the system at that time it was two point two five dollars per liter, and it changes um, with time. But within the supply management system, milk definitely costs more. So they, there's always um, things to consider. As as I mentioned earlier, when we were talking about the impacts of animal production and the increase of um, animal production and as consumers uh, are we <laughs> willing to take the, the, the burden to try and reduce um, overproduction. So some animal welfare, uh, there are also animal welfare considerations um, because with the supply management system, average farm size in, in Canada is around like 84 lactating cows and this is not a set number, it, it changes over time, but it's, it's definitely much smaller than other areas where they're like 500 cow operations. So there is um, definitely a lower proportion between the handlers and the uh, cows on the farm, which would mean uh, better, maybe better farming technology, best practices, uh, and care for individual care for the animals on the farm. And farmers can also like sustain themselves with small operations, um, limiting the number of uh, animals that, through limiting the numbers of animals that, that, that they have. So it's also a question of does head size have an impact on the animal welfare? So needing to compare the conditions between like the huge um, cow production system and like small farming systems, um, because most people would assume also factory farming is bad, right? But there, it's it's not as straight up, um, it's not as clear as that or set in line as that. Um, it's a very complex issue, as in some a study was also done as on um, lame uh, lameness in cows. Uh, and larger farms had fewer lame cows, most probably because uh, they have like better staff, more uh, access to vets, full-time veterinarians. Uh, they are able to, maybe they get in more individual care with more employers, uh, where, which is, whereas a local vet, you need uh, more time uh, to access or there's not enough veterinarians in an area to, to help a small farm. So they always, um, pros and cons and animal welfare is very complex because it also involves um, access, natural living, uh, natural behaviors, um, um, a lot of, as well as health. And um, so it, it's a lot of factors that can be considered, but generally speaking with more control, um, and better support for farmers and control of uh, production and a small farm size, they, it is, we would assume that there is um, more better welfare um, because of the hand -to head ratio and also um, income back for farmers, even for small farms, they still maintain income to better support their operations. So something to, to look into to continue researching and uh, studying to know to know more. 